All right, so we were, so there's a uh, parabola equation, and they're asking us to basically graph it and find, find out if it's, um, you know, find out its center, its focus point, and its directrix line. So, all right, so, so first things first, let's find the center of this thing. So how are we going to find the center? How do you find the center of a parabola? It's opposite, right, right. Opposite, opposite, right. Opposite of what's next to x, opposite of what's next to y. It's going to be that way all throughout the section um, for th the whole chapter. 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, all the shapes we do. Whatever's in the equation, the center is opposite of what's next to x, opposite of what's next to y. So that would be what? Opposite of 3 is negative 3, and opposite of negative 3 is positive. It'll be x, y. Everybody see what I'm doing there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when it says y minus 3, that's going to be the x coordinate? No, no, no. Okay. Y's, y's got to be y. X got to be x. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's so opposite. it's just opposite of the number. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't mean opposite of x, y. I mean opposite of the number. So, yes, yeah, so if there's a negative 3 next to y, that means y will be positive 3. If there's a positive 3 next to x, x will be negative 3. So, back 3, up 3, right there is the center of the parabola. Back 3, up 3. So, there's the center of the parabola. Now, um... If that's the center, now we would determine which way is this thing going to open up. So you're going to go up, down, right, or left. Remember what determines the direction? The right side, first power letter. So whatever's here on the right side, first power, not the squared one, which is on the left. Right side, first power letter, that's X, and it's positive mm -hmm. number, positive 8, positive X. So it's going to go in the positive X direction to the right. Positive X direction. Does that make sense how we determine that? The right side. See how the, on the board, even we've got those pictures from last time? So the, the right side determines the direction. Right side, first power letter, determines the direction. Positive x going to the right. Okay, so let's write down what we've got then. So they're going to ask us for the center. They're going to say, what's the center? And again, that's opposite, opposite, so negative 3, 3. And then they're going to ask us for the focus point. How do we find the focus point? Well, we've got to force a 4 out. You with me? All the equations, remember the equations, they all have a 4. Let me write them for you. The equations all, it's going to be y minus 3 squared equals 4a x plus 3. So you've got to force a 4 out. So this, this is how, this is a good... Time for me just to mention this. Math and science does this all the time. This is very typical for math and science. Um, that is that they give a certain setup or template that you're always going to follow. And, and, and then you just make things look like that. I call it plastic surgery just to put in people's mind. We're removing the wrinkles. We're changing the way it looks without changing who it is. So we're going to change the way our thing up here looks. We're going to give it that look with a four. We're going to force a four out without changing values. We're making it look different without being different. Why? Because once you force a 4, then that number next to 4 will tell you where your focus is. That's why that's helpful. That's what they do almost all the time in math science. They have these formulas. You make whatever they've given you look like that, then you can do what you need to do. So how do I force a 4 out without changing the value? It's really 8. Yeah. So it's 4 times 2. Times two. That's still 8, and now it has the look we need, and now we know what A is. A is 2. That's how far to the focus point. Did that make sense? 
So again, we're always doing plastic surgery. We're making it look different without being different. We're taking whatever they gave us and forcing a four to appear without changing the overall value. It's still four times two, eight. Why? Because then when you do, then you know what the A is. And what is the A? A is the distance from the center to the focus. A is the, remember, A is a distance, right? We never make A negative. That's what I mean by saying A is a distance. Just like if I said I went down to L.A., Nobody would say I drove negative 200 miles and I went south. Did we just say 200? We just say distance is positive. We never give a negative. So A is never negative. It's a distance. It's a distance from the center to the focus. And you find that A when you force a 4 in your formula. That's what we're always going to do. You're going to force a 4 out in your formula. Can you repeat why it's 2 again? Uh, because i got to go back to 8. So it's got to be the same as that. I can't change the value. It's got to still be 8. And 4 times 2 is still 8. So I haven't changed anything. This formula is the same as the original, isn't it? It's exactly the same. It looks different without being different. Are they ever going to give us a case where it's not going to... Be so nice. Yeah, Absolutely. In just a minute, it won't be long at all. They'll give you like um, whatever, y plus 3 squared or whatever equals 7 yeah. times x minus 2. What are you going to do? You still got to force a 4. What are you going to do when they say 7? And it's not so convenient. 8 was super nice. That was just 4 times 2. What power on 7 to make it become a 4? What's it going to be? Come on. You guys can do it. Tell me. What goes here so that these two will really be 7? Good job. You just take the number they gave you, just pop it over a 4. The 4's canceled. Go right back. Okay. Just pop it over a 4. See how easy that is? So you can always force a 4, even if it's not convenient. Right? You can, and we will. We will always force a Get that idea? They do that so much in math science. If you dial into that, it'll make so much of math science easier. They, they give a certain look, and then you always make your thing look that way. Then you can do what you need to do from there. Does that make sense? You always force a 4 out. No matter what they give you, you force a 4, you factor out a 4, and then it's easy. These will cancel, so, so it's just 7 fourths. And what I'll actually do is to make it easier, I'll, then I'll, I'll, I'll change that to a decimal. I'll divide that in my calculator. 7 divided by 4 be, um, it's 1.75. And that would be where our A is, 1.75. Are we going to have to do the last points? No, not on this one. We good? You'd still need to get a decimal. Yeah, well, you don't have to, but I think it'd be easier. For graphing, because we're going to have to graph, and it's easier for us to do that. So let's go back. All right, so we good? So R A is 2, because that's the same as 8, right? Got to have a 4. 4 times 2 is the same as 8. So our A is 2. So what does that mean? That means from the center, the distance, A is the distance from the center to the focus, is 2. Now, where are the focal points always? Inside the satellite dish, or the parabola, right? So it's going to be 2 this away, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? That right there is going to be the, the point. Now, what's the easy way? Let me give you a real easy way uh, to find that. Let me write the coordinates of the center, minus 3, 3. We got that from right here, right? That's the coordinates of this dot right here. Now, if I'm going to go to the right 2, that means I'm going to add 2 to what? The x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? The X, because right and left is always X. Up, down is always Y, huh? Mm -hmm. We good with that? Because they're going to turn these things all different ways. you got to be clear. So if you're moving right, left, you're adding to an X coordinate, aren't you? Right. If you're going up, down, you're doing a Y. So if I'm going right to, I'm going to add to to that X coordinate. I'm going from the center, so I'm adding to the center's coordinates, specifically his X coordinates. So that'll be negative one, one three. Points, you add to the y coordinate. Yeah, if we, they're not going to ask us for that on this one, but if we wanted to find the lattice, you're right, we go up, down from the y coordinate. That'd be true. Yeah. We good there? So minus one, three is the focus point. Minus one, three is the focus point. Okay, now finally... 
let's find, the last thing they will ask me to find is the directrix line. So let's find the directrix line. Now, how do you know where the directrix is? It's behind them. It's behind, yeah. The directrix is always back here. It's like directing the parabola from behind it. So it's the opposite direction of the focal point. In fact, it's the same distance. So in other words, if it's two to the right to the focus point, then it's back to, to the directrix line. It's always same distance, opposite direction to get to the directrix line. So can I find where it's at exactly? Mm -hmm. So if I took that center, it's all from the center, isn't it? Mm -hmm. From that center and I added two, I went right two to the focal point, then I'm going to subtract two, go left two, which means I'm going to subtract two from the x-coordinate again, because again, it's right left, x-coordinate. So that'll be minus three, minus two. That's minus 5. And I'm not going to do the y-coordinate, because remember, this is a line, not a point. Mm -hmm. It's x equals negative 5. It's the directrix line, x equals negative 5. I don't care. It's not a point. I don't care about the y-coordinate. I'm, I'm not doing a dot. I'm doing a line. It's the line that goes through the x-axis at negative 5. That's all they want. We good? How are we doing on all that? Questions I can answer? Is, it, it, is that a vertical asymptote? Yeah. It's not an asymptote, really. It's dotted, so I know it looks like an asymptote. The reason it's not really an asymptote is the graph, graph does not get close to it, does it? Now, it's, now, when you say, why are we putting it on there like it looks like an asymptote? Well, it's part of what directs the graph, but it doesn't direct it like an asymptote line does. An asymptote line directly guides the graph. It, it, it virtually touches. This one does it. It stays back and directs it. So it's a little different. It's dotted because it's not really part of the actual graph. It's part of the structure, the scaffolding that what, makes the building. What force does it represent? What's that? Like. Remember when I first uh, showed how... Right, try that one. First off, you've got to force a four out there. You've got to do a little plastic surgery on that equation, right? Make it look different without being different. You've got to force a negative four there in the front without changing any values. So what's, what's, what number's out there right now? Negative 1 right now. I'm going to force a 4. And so what's going to be in the parentheses so that when all is said and done, it's really still just negative 1? Yeah, remember, you take whatever number was originally there and you put it over 4 because those 4s would cancel and it go right back to negative 1, huh? And then I would make that a decimal because that's going to be easier to find on a graph. So just for our convenience. We good to there? All right, take it from there. So now it has the look we need. Now go to the graph. Start with the center. Put the center on the graph. Remember how to do the center? Opposite of what's next to x. Opposite of what's next to y. Put the center and then find the direction. And what they want from us is the same three things they wanted last time. They want the center, the focus point, and the directrix line. No lattice rectum. They're giving us a break from the lattice rectum stuff. So what's the center? The center's negative 1. 
Yeah, opposite, opposite, negative 1, 5. We good? Mm -hmm. Center's opposite, opposite, negative 1, 5. So now we can go to the graph. And go back one up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right there is the center. Back one up five. So there's the center. And then which, and then next you want to determine which way is this parabola going? Up, down, right, or left? Down. What determines the direction? The right side, first power letter. Negative Y. So you look at the sign on the four, and then the letter that's on the right side. So it's negative Y. It's going in the negative Y direction down. So this one's going down, huh? You good? So now, can you find the focus point? See if you can find the coordinates of the focus. Give you a second. Find the focus point? Yeah, we take the center. We're going, remember, the, the focus point's always inside the problem. So it's going to be like, like there. And the, right? So it's going to be inside, and the, and the directrix line will be behind it, huh? Right? Directrix line always behind, focus point inside. How far? Well, the jump, the A, this is A, the number next to 4. That's why we force the 4, so we can get our hands on the A. See, it's helpful for us. That's why we're doing it. So the A is the jump, the distance, from the center to the focus point. So this is down 0.25. Now, does that mean I, I so I'm going to take, so how do you find it? Well, you take the center. We're jumping from the center point, from the negative 1, 5. So um, I am going to, let me take the negative 1, 5. And then am I going to mess with the x coordinate or the y? Are you going up, down, or right, left? Up, down. Up, down. So it's y coordinate time, huh? I'm going to go minus 0.25 from the y coordinate. You with me? I'm jumping down from the center, so that's from the y coordinate. And what do we get? Minus one, just use calculator, or you know money, five dollars minus a quarter is four dollars seventy-five cents. Huh? So the focus is minus one, comma four point seven five. We good? Now can you find the directrix line? So the directrix line, directrix line starts off right here at a height of 5, right? I mean, I'm sorry, the center does. The directrix line is the opposite direction from the focus. It's behind it. So instead of going down 0.25, I'm going to go up 0.25. You with me? Focus and directrix, opposite directions from the center. So you go up 0.25. So is that... Is that Going to mess with the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? The y again. Up, down is always the y. So I'm adding 0.25 to the y-coordinate. So minus 1, 5.25. But actually, it's not a point. It's a line. So they don't want point. They don't want this. That would be a dot. It's not the directrix dot. It's the directrix line. It's this dotted line. So how do you give the equation of that line? Well, it's the line that shoots right through the y-axis, straight through the y-axis at the y-value, 5.25. It's y equals 5.25. That's the directrix line. Does that make sense? All you need is the y-coordinate. Why? Because it shoots through the y-axis. It's a straight line going straight through the y-axis on that. Question, Becca? Good. And we're done. That's all they want. We okay with that last step? Everybody see that's a line, right? It's going through. All you care about is the Y. We don't care about the X coordinate. We don't care about right, left. It just shoots right through the Y axis at a height of 5.25. Go try that one. Same kind of thing. You got to force a four out, and they want you to um, get the graph and the center focus directors line.
So I'm going to force a 4. So then what number goes next to the 4? <coughs> yeah, you just whatever's there over 4, because those would cancel, still be 10. And then just use your calculator. 10 divided by 4, isn't it 2.5? Yeah. So 2.5. So we can always force a 4. So that tells us our A. Our A is 2.5. All right. Can you find the, go to the graph? Put and the center, find the center. Center will be opposite, opposite, right? Opposite of what's next to X, opposite of what's next to Y. So the center is opposite, opposite. So 2, negative 2 for the center. So put that thing on the graph. So right to, down to, right there. We get there, over two, down two is the center. Everybody getting that okay? And then you got to decide which way does this thing go, right, left, up, down. Look at the right side, first power letter. It's positive four. X, huh? So it's going to the right. Positive X direction. We good? Positive X direction. Now, Find the focus point. So, what are we going to do to find the focus point? See what you can do. Find the focus. All right, so the focus point, the A is 2.5. That's the jump from the center forward to the focus, backwards to the directrix, right? So, where's the focus? It's inside. So this is a jump to the right, 2.5, and backwards, negative 2.5, to the directrix line, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. It's all making sense. So, all right, so how do we, so this is the focus point, and backwards is the directrix line. So now... That 2.5, I'm going to add 2.5 because I'm going to the right. Now, is that going to add to the X coordinate? It's, it's the center. X. X coordinate or Y coordinate? X. Because right, left is always X. So I'm going to add 2.5 to the X coordinate. So this will be 4.5 minus 2. We good there? Mm -hmm. Finally, the directrix line. So for the directrix line, I'm going to subtract. 2.5 for the next one. That'll be negative 0.5 coming negative 2. Oh, no, it's not a point. Uh -uh. Blah, blah, blah. Get rid of that. It hits the x-axis. Are right, you with me? That's hitting. How do you know whether to do x or y? Well, which axis is it hitting? It's hitting the x-axis, isn't it? It's a line straight down through the x-axis. It hits the x-axis. doesn't touch the y. So it's x equals negative 0.5. Everybody see how I came up with that? It hits the x-axis, and we're done. Are we good? You ready for more? You're saying, come on, Miss Taryn, I got it. Give me more. <laughs> all right. We'll go. Now, this one is all messed up. What's different about this one from the way... Remember, we have, to, we have to make it have a certain look. This one is really different in the way it looks. How so? How are they supposed to look? What's the left side supposed to look like? What... What did the left side look like in the last three problems? X squared. There were parentheses squared, right? Look back. Parentheses. Whoops, I'm scribbling all over it. <laughs> parentheses squared. See, parent. They all have parentheses squared, don't they? So we're gonna have to change it to look like that. So we have to make the left side, and by the way, the right side also, huh? See, the right side has parentheses with something factored out. Mm -hmm. The left side has parentheses with a two power mm -hmm. every time. Parenthesis with a 2 power on the left. Parenthesis with stuff factored out on the right. Mm -hmm. And a 4, eventually, forced out on the right. That's the look we've got to give it.
We've got to make it look that way so that we can do what we need to do for graphing. So how do I make the left side become parentheses squared and the right side factor out with parentheses also? Divide 18 by 2 and double. Yeah. Do you know that? What's that called? What's that called in Farsi? I forget it. Okay. That's all right. In English, it's called completing the square. Abdul is exactly right. Do you remember completing the square? To make something, let me write a note for you. When the left side does not have, does not have parentheses square, you must complete the square. And what that means is, Number, the middle number, how do you complete the square? You take the middle number over 2 squared and you add to both sides. Renee, you're making me happy that, that... What do I mean by middle number? Middle number I mean is, is this number, the number next to x, like Abdul was saying. It's the number next to x. So you got to grab that. Put it over 2 and square it. It's like a little trick. It'll, it'll complete it. It'll give it just what it needs to factor as a square like we want. So what is, what is that? That's 18 over 2? 9. 9 squared. 9 squared. 9 times 9? 81. 81. So that means I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to go plus 81, plus 81 on both sides, right? You add to both, because you gotta do the same thing to both sides, right? We can't change anything here. We're gonna change the way it looks. This is radical plastic surgery. We're gonna change the way it looks a lot, but we're not changing any actual values. So it's always same thing to both sides. So add 81 to both sides. When you do, so everybody, see, everybody good so far? Is this making sense? So you just take whatever's next, whatever's in the middle, <coughs> over 2 squared. So now the left side is x squared plus 18x plus 81. The right side is 9y minus 18 x plus 9 squared <laughs> plus 81. The left side now, what, why did we do this? Because we wanted the left side to factor. In fact, factor beautifully. Factor as the same thing twice. And now it will. That number completes it. Gives it just what it needs. So what well, has a factor? What times what multiplies to be 81 adds to be 18? Plus 9 plus 9, which means it's x plus 9 squared. See how that worked perfectly? See how that made it? It completed it? Gave it just what it needed? It's like in the olden days. Remember when they used to say that your husband or wife completes you? My better half? I like that saying. That's how I feel about my wife completes me. Perfect. Just what I needed. So that's what that number does. It completes it, gives it just what it needs to make it factor as the same thing twice. That good? And the other side, whatever happens, happens. Oh, actually, we got to factor it. So what, what my, minus 18 plus 81? What is that? I don't know. 63. Thank you. Good. Yeah, whatever, whatever. No, we do have to factor that right side. So how do we factor the right side now? Take a 9. Take out a 9. Y plus 7. There it is. Well, almost. Now we've got to force the 4 out. We've almost got the look we need. 9 over 4. Yeah. Is everybody good to there, though? Let me pause there for a second take any questions you might have. Let's keep going. So we have X plus 9 squared. And the other side is what? 9 times Y plus 7. Okay, last thing is we got to force a 4 out, don't we? we got to put a 4 out there. So I'm going to force a 4. So what's it going to be so we don't change any values? You take what they gave you, the 9, you put it over 4, because that would cancel and go back to 9, really, huh? And then just use your calculator. 9 divided by 4, isn't it 2.25? And there we go. We've, we've really done some radical plastic surgery. It looks a lot different. It's the same value it always has been. Now we can graph it. I'm not, I, can I just go dot, dot, dot? We've done a bunch of graphs. We don't have time. If we, if we do all those, we'll never get to the word problems that are coming. 
So I'm just going, you do all the rest from here. The rest is normal. Find the center, find the focus, you know, which way it goes, up, down, right, or left. All that's the same. Let's try another one of these, how about? Another one of these magic, or I call it magic number, completing number. Questions before we move on? Good. Let's, so um, same thing. Try that one. Give that one the look it needs. So do you notice on that one you're going to have to jump the 5x and the 25 to the other side? Because see how we always, in all of our equations, let me go back. Uh-oh. Hit the wrong button. Um, back here, see how we always have x on one side, y on the other? Right? So you've got to separate this. So grab this 5x, jump it over here. Grab this 25, jump it over here. That would be your first step. Minus 5. When they jump to the other side, they change signs, right? We good to there? That's your first step? Because you got to, we always have the letters on opposite sides, right? The y squared on the left the, the, and the first power letter on the right always, huh? So take it from there, factor now, or I mean, um, find the completing number that'll complete it, make it factor perfectly. So we, so take that negative 10, put it over 2 squared, which is negative 5 squared, which is positive 25. So you add 25 to both sides. That good? That'll do it. That'll factor it perfectly. How's it factor? Remember, two numbers that multiply to be plus 25 add to be minus 10. Negative 5. Negative 5, negative 5, huh? Mm -hmm. The other side, whatever happens, happens. So this is y minus 5 squared. The other side is minus 5x. Just happened that those numbers canceled on the right side. It's kind of a coincidence. And now you need to force a 4 out and we'll have the look we need for graphing. So, it's, there's no plus or minus to the x, so the x is zero. Oh, right, yes, yeah. sorry, yes, correct. Sorry. That's right, you're exactly right, yep. If, if we went to do the center, the center of the x part would be zero, that's right. So let's force a four out, force a four out. And what number's got to be in there? Well, you take what they gave you, the five, and you put it over four, because those would cancel and still be negative five. Use your calculator. That's going to be five divided by four, 1.25x, yeah. So you're right, the, the first step, the center, if you want on to graph it now, the center would be 0, 5, because there's no number next to x. Notice it's the same thing as x minus 0, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Remember, the number added or subtracted next to x, which is nothing in this case, 0, that's the center, 0, 5. Yeah. I'm not going to do any more on that one. You, the rest would be the graphing stuff that you already know how to do. Is that okay? This making sense? This magic, no, I call it magic, the completing number thing. All good? No questions? Able to do that? Try that one. Same kind of thing. Got to give it the right look. So, you're going to jump that x over, right? Because you've got to get the first power letter on the right side, second power letter on the left side. Okay, so we get y squared minus 4y. The x is on the other side. Find the uh, completing number, the number that will give it just what it needs. You take the middle number, 
Divide by two. Over two. Squared. It's minus two squared. Plus four? Yeah, it just so happens to be four. Yeah. Add four to both sides. It's always positive, huh? That completing number is always positive because you square. So then that left side's guaranteed to factor. Y minus two squared. Y minus two. Y minus two. Four out of four. Four times one, four. Okay. We good to there so far? Everybody good to there? Now, the one trick you might not be aware of here is... Um, is what that you uh, you remember remember the right side always needs to be factored. We look back, see how the right side. Well, that was a weird example. See the right side's always factored as well. Both sides are factored. Mm -hmm. The only reason the last one wasn't because it was zero x minus zero. So both sides are factored, huh? So you got to factor this. How do you factor? How do you factor x plus four? Well, first, we're not to the four thing yet. We're going to force the four in a minute. First, just put a one. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing as just x plus four. It just looks factored now. Do you see that? See this game we're constantly playing in math and science? Make it look different without being different. Why? Well, because once we have a certain look, then we can do our graphing thing or whatever thing you're trying to do with that math science thing at that moment. Make sense? You get, I mean, if you get the hang of this, this is like, this is probably one-third of all math science is this game we're playing right now. Make something look different without being different so that you can then do with it what you need to do with it. So you've got to make parentheses on the right side, but you can't change any values. So, if, so, what, so basically, whatever number's in front of x, that's what we always factor out. Let me say that again. Whatever numbers of what was in front of x here, 1. What was in front of x? Now, now this one, um, I mean, you, you, yeah, we could have written x minus 0. That was just nothing. This one, we, we, right, we factored the 9 out. Right there. So there was a 9 in front of the y. We factored the 9 out, didn't we? So on the right side, whatever's in front, you factor. Okay, take out the 1, and then you force the 4, because you've got to have that to know how to find the focus. So what goes here, this number, 1 over 4, make that 0.25. And then you could graph away to your heart's desire. Right? Back up. Yeah, you factor whatever to make it true. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if the right side was minus 4x minus 8, you need to factor out in that minus 4, and that would now be x plus 2, okay. because if they multiplied, that would be true. But if there was no, like, I'm getting confused when I'm graphing the focus. So if there's, like, pretend there's nothing um, added or subtracted, so it's just <clears throat> at 0, and then it's like a negative 1. So that would put it behind it. So you're talking about like this equation where there's nothing. Yeah. Okay, so there's the center, that's uh -huh. one thing, and then there's the focus. Uh -huh. So the center would be 0, 5. Okay. okay, and so from that center, then to go to the focus, you would just jump whatever. Um, so. Oh, because it can't be a negative number because it's the distance. Right, but it's that's the direction the of the... Not. That's why you do the... So 0, 5 would be the center. Uh -huh. Okay, and then you would determine the direction first. So before you try to find focus, decide if it's going up, down, right, or left. Which way is it going? Negative x, left. Mm -hmm. And so then I know where the focus is. It's here. Mm -hmm. And then it's just the distance. Yeah, it's just 1.25. Yeah, it's just a distance. You're right. So you would just jump 1.25 that way. That's right. Mm -hmm. 20. So it's, uh, they're, they're giving us a graph, and we are coming up with the equation. So, so, which, so I would just right away, I would just say, hey, which way is this thing going? Down. Up, down, right, left, going down. Down, So it's negative y direction. So that means the right side has to be minus 4ay, blah, blah, blah. Left side is x something squared. Right? Good? Got to be? Because the right side is the direction, huh? If it's going down, negative y direction, right side's negative 
4 with a Y, so... No B and no C. It's either D or A. Yeah, no B, no C, huh? It's either A or D. So far, they got the negative Y on the right side. Now, what's the other thing we can do to quickly figure out the answer? Center point. Center point. Remember, it's always opposite, opposite. This is the X, this is the Y. The opposite of the Y, next to the Y, it's got to be the opposite of negative 7. Positive 7. D it is. Next question. Good? We made that in one minute flat. Satellite dish is shaped like a paraboloid of revolution. A paraboloid. When you get into, if you go forward into calculus next semester maybe, end of Calc 1, the very end of Calc 1 and then the beginning of Calc 2, they kind of do it again. Um, you, you talk about um, three-dimensional shapes of revolution. So that means you take a, a flat two-dimensional thing like a parabola. Right? Par parabola is just a flat, no depth to it. Flat. And then you rotate it. You revolve it and you make it into a 3D. Can you picture how that would make it 3D? Yeah. Right? You make it into a 3D, what's called a paraboloid of revolution. Yeah, you revolve it. You revolve it. Yeah, so in calculus, you'll take graphs and you'll revolve them around different axes. X-axis, Y-axis. You'll make 3D shapes, saddles and pots and things. And you figure the volume and the surface area of all those shapes. And one of the challenging parts of calculus. So they're, they're hitting it that right now. You're taking a parabola and you're revolving it, making a 3D parabola, basically, which is what a satellite dish is, as we already talked about when we started this section, huh? A satellite dish is a 3D parabola. So it's a paraboloid of revolution. You're taking a 2D object and you... And you rotate it to make it 3D. So now, the signals that emanate from the satellite strike the surface of the dish and are reflected to a single point where the receiver is located. That's what we talked about on the first day, right, of Prabolus a couple days ago. So, um, yeah, the dish is 12 feet across at its opening, 4 feet deep at its center. Where do you put that receiver? Answer is... No, I'm just kidding. We've got to work it out. All right. So 21, let's write out. So basically we have a problem that's going to abbreviate just to the words we need. We've got a parabola satellite dish. It's 12 feet across, 4 feet deep at the center. Where, oh where, do we put the receiver? Okay, let's draw a picture of this. So I'm going to draw... Well, wouldn't it be 12 on the x-axis? So I'm going to draw a no, satellite dish. Mm -hmm. And this will be 12. And at the very center, in the deepest point, it's 4 feet deep. So it's 4 feet deep at the center. 12 feet across at the opening. All right. Um, where do you put the receiver? Where do you put the receiver? Well, the receiver is going to go at the um, focus point, isn't it? Because everything's going to... I was last night, right, for, right at bedtime. I, I let the, the dogs, the dumb dogs, out into the backyard to do their little potty thing, and I was standing out in the dark in the backyard, and I looked up at the neighbor's satellite dish that he has on his roof right next to me, and um, was looking, and I was noticing that the receiver's like further out. The arms are holding the receiver further beyond the edge of the, of the dish. They're not always that way. I mean, I think they actually, most of the ones I see on roofs are that way, but they could make them differently is my point. But anyway, so my point is the receiver's not, you know, right at the edge. His, my neighbor's, is beyond the edge. Some of them are inside, you know. So how do we know where they put that receiver? Remember, it's the place that the parabola aims everything, right? All the, all the little, you know, when they beam them down, the, the, the curve is curved just right to bounce everything right to the receiver. The curve is curved just perfectly to bounce everything to the receiver, to focus everything on that focus point. So how do we find that point? How do engineers know where that is when they build these things? Becca, as a future engineer, tell me. <laughs> so I think you would have to like half the 12 feet, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's six, six and six. Be the same Keep from the each side. And then you would come out two feet. 
from the center, so that would be six feet also. Two so feet from the center? Yeah, so like, sorry, that's four feet, and then you would add another two feet, so it would also be six feet, because it has to be the same distance from each point, right? Uh, same distance from the focus point and the directrix line, which we're not even seeing. Okay. There would have to be some directrix line over there. The parabola, not the focus point, but the parabola, all the points on the parabola are equal. Yeah, we're not going to do all that. That would be hard. But, um, yeah, in fact, yeah, in fact, we could do something like that. Actually, you know, you're right, Rebecca. We could do some fancy geometry. Well beyond my ability. Well, well beyond my ability. But, yeah, I'm sure there is a way. I'd, you were saying... I'd, I'd be interested in if I had, you were like, hours of free time some week. point redirects week. the signal straight to the receiver. That's what you were saying a satellite dish does. Right. Okay, so it's going to concentrate at the focus point and it's going to go to the receiver. So we should put the receiver maybe a little bit in front of the focus point. No, no, no. The receiver's at the focus point. So yeah, the receiver is the focus point. So yeah, so the receiver is right where everything's going to be. And yeah, I'm sure there is some really complex way to go back to the original definition and say, well, look, this parabola is all the points that are same distance from the directrix line and the focus point. With that in mind, where's, you know, I'm sure there is some hard geometry way. But we don't want to do that. And I'm interested now. I, I'd like to know. But anyway, I don't got time. I probably never will in my life. I will die not knowing, probably. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but, you know, it's just one of those things. You have five kids, you make some choices. You don't have time for your hobbies all the time. All my hobbies are gone. All right, anyway. So, um, so um, instead, though, we have an easier way. Then instead of knowing all that fancy geometry, which is really high-level, difficult geometry, we instead can just put it on a made-up axis system. This is where we see the power of these axis systems that we're using. There's not really an axis system there, right? I didn't look up at my neighbor's um, satellite dish on his roof and just picture a... Well, I sort of did, actually. I sort of began, But that's just because I know how we solve these problems. It's not really there. Well, how about this? The axis system I was imagining was just in my mind. It wasn't really there. It was imaginary, right? So they're really... So that's what you do. You make up uh, an axis system that's not really there. Remember, all of math is made up to help us describe things that are real. So you make up an axis system because that's easy for us. We have equations that fit on XY axis systems, don't we? So we do that. We do that. This is called, by the way, analytic geometry or algebraic geometry, meaning it's geometry with algebra equations put to the pictures. That's what we're doing. That's what all this is about. It's equations on axis systems for pictures. It's called algebraic geometry or analytic geometry is the official name. So it's easier than regular geometry. All right, anyway, so here we go. So, it's, so I'm going to put an axis system down. I'm going to put this thing right at the center because that's just the easiest way to go. And then let's write the equation, the algebraic equation for that parabola. What's the equation? Well, the center is going to be 0, 0. 0, 0. Which way is it going? It's going positive x. Positive x. So the right side is positive 4ax. The other side's got to be y squared. Good so far? That's the equation for that thing. Now, what am I trying to find? Like I'm trying to find where the receiver goes, which is a. It's all about finding a. This whole problem has become find a and you're done, right? Because a, remember, is the distance from the center to the focus. So wherever the receiver goes at the focus point, that's at A. So how do I find A? In that equation, solve for A. How are we going to solve for A? What are we going to do? Well, the variables are just by themselves since the center point is 0, 0. Is there something I could plug in for X and Y? Put a point on the line? Yeah, point on the curve, point on the parabola. Sorry. Yeah. Do we have a, what, what is a point that we know for sure? Zero, zero, zero. Well, yeah, you could do zero, zero, <laughs> but that won't get you far. If you plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, what are you going to get? Uh, we 0 squared equals 4 times 8 times 0. 0 equals 0. Yes, it does. But that doesn't get me very far, huh? Uh, 4, 0. Is 4, where's 4, 0? Wouldn't that be right here? Is that a point on the curve? No, that's a point on a line. That's not a point on the parabola. The parabola is the black. 4, 0 is not on the parabola. So 4, 0 doesn't make the equation true. But how about this point? That one's on the parabola. That one's got to make the equation true. What's his coordinates? Four, six, huh? Does everybody see that? 
Because from the origin, remember, coordinates are always from the origin. Over 4, up 6. Because 12 is all the way up and down, isn't it? 12 is all the way up and down. Right. So that's over 4, up 6, isn't so it? 4, negative 6 is... These are I don't need the other one. Okay. So everybody good there? Mm -hmm. Everybody see that? This is what we're going to do on all these word problems, basically. We're going to grab the upper corner, find the coordinates, plug it in. We're going to do bridge problems in a minute. We're going to find a corner, plug it in. It's just every time this is what you do. Because any point on the picture, this goes for any picture, not just problems, right? And any time you have a graph, any point on the graph has got to make the equation true. So if I put in x is 4, y is 6, it, the equation has got to be true. So if y is 6 the last point. and x so is 4, four like that, zero. it's got to be true. 36 yeah. is 16a. Solve for a. Divide by 16. And that's 2. Uh, 0.25? There it is. So this focus is actually inside the dish. It's only. About right here, huh? It's only 2.25 from the center. So they would need, the engineers would need to place the receiver 2.25 feet from the center. That's, this parabola will aim, the satellite dish will aim all the beams right there. It'll focus everything right there. So it wasn't that bad with using these equations and a made-up axis system. You could have totally made up the, with the problem going up instead of right. It's just all made up. It would, you could work it all out that way. Oh, it doesn't matter the direction? No. One of my neighbor's thing is diagonal. I mean, whatever. You know, we're just making this up. Mm -hmm. The axis system isn't really there. But once you make it up, the equations fitting it hold true for that axis system. Good. We'll try another one. So they got this big old searchlight that's 12 feet across at the opening. The light source, the lamp, is 2 feet from the base. So I'm going to draw it sideways again, but you could put it up and down. It doesn't really matter. It's all made up. So I'll do it like that. This thing is 12 feet across at the opening. The light source is two feet from the base. So that means if the base is right here, it's only two feet to where they put the light source, the A. Is that good? Is that making sense? So that's, that's where, now remember, the searchlights, flashlights, headlights, they do the same thing as a satellite dish, just backwards. Satellite dish, the beams come into it and bounce everything to the focus. Searchlights, headlights, flashlights, the, the lamp is at the focus and it shines backwards. Things come from the focus, shine backwards on the mirrored parabolic surface, and that bounces them straight out, runs them backwards, huh? So, all right, so same idea. So what they're asking me then, they're giving me the A, and they're asking me, what is this depth? What's the depth of the searchlight at the center? Well, is, if, the base is two feet, or if the base is two feet away... Made up that axis system. Can you write an equation now that fits that axis system? So what's the direction of opening? Positive x. Positive x. It's going in the positive x direction. So it's going to be positive 4ax on the right side, y squared on the left. Centered at the origin. So I don't need to put any numbers plus or minus next to the y. Do we know the A? Yeah. Yeah, this time we know A. A is just 2, huh? Just pop in a 2 right there. So this is y squared is 4 times 2 times x. This is y squared is 8x. So there's the equation for that parabola. We know the y. So it's always about this point right here. Right. What's the coordinates of that point right there? 6, six and 6. 
Six? Where are we getting six? The y is six. Oh, yeah, the y is six. What's the over? Call that x. That's the depth. Yep. That makes sense? Right, isn't that true? Right, starting from the origin, how far over you go is the depth, isn't it? And then up six. Does that make sense? So from the origin, over x, up six to that point. And that x, that x we're over, is the depth we're looking for. That's the depth of the uh, thing, the light source, the lamp. Searchlight, that's it. <laughs> Plug in that six. Six squared is 8x. 36 is 8x. Last step, divide by the 8. What is that? 4.5 feet deep at the center. We good? Questions I can answer. All is well? Can I move on? We good? Um, she has nothing to do with the problem. But uh, a bridge is built in the shape of a parabolic arch. The bridge has a span of 120 feet mm -hmm. and a maximum height of 20 feet. So that means across here okay. is 120 feet. Mm -hmm. And the height of the bridge, well, just right in there, see where that little H is? The height from the water to the bottom of the bridge is 20 feet. Choose a suitable rectangular coordinate system, like make up an axis system, and find the height of the arch at, a distance, at distances of 10, 30, and 50 feet from the center. So um, this would be actually very useful for any engineer building a, a bridge over water or over a highway. They would need to know what kind of vertical clearance they have at 10 feet from the center or 20 or 30 or 50 or 100 feet from the center. So let's draw a nice little picture. Of it, I'm going to put it on an axis system. Like that. There's my little bridge. All I need is the arch. And um, they're telling me that this is 120, right? And that this is 20. And that's it. And from that, I want to find, I want then their question to me is, hey, if you go like 10 feet to the right, over at 10, how high up will the arch be 10 feet to the right? And they also want to know 30 feet to the right and 50 feet to the right. If you go 10 feet to the right, how high up is that arch? What kind of vertical clearance are you going to have there? That'd be important, right, for semi-trucks passing under, and a highway if you have a you know, parabolic arch bridge, want to have clearance for them, yeah. ships going in the river underneath a parabolic arch bridge. So, got to find the vertical clearance. Engineers want to calculate that ahead of time, not after the fact. <laughs> so, how can we do it? What are we going to guess what we're going to do? Find the equation, of course, right? So, let's find the equation. This is the problem. Here, let me... He, he goes on down like that. It's going to be the negative. So write this. Let me let you do that. Rather than me do it real quick. Okay, so which direction is it going? Down. Negative, negative Y. So the right side always holds the direction on a problem. Negative 4AY. The other side's X squared. Good so far? But that would be if it was centered at 0, 0. Because I have nothing added or subtracted next to X or Y. It's not centered at 0, 0. The center is right here. What's the center? 0, 20. Zero, 20. So i got to put x minus, remember it's opposite, opposite, and y minus 20. We good? Opposite, opposite next to x and y from the graph to the equation. Remember how we learned that? So x minus 0 and y minus 20. Negative 0 and negative 20, the opposite of 0 and 20. Is 0.25 We're going to have to work hard to find a. Everybody good to there? Everybody seeing that? 
And x minus 0, that's just x, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, can we find a? Well, let me hold on. Do you realize we need to find a? That's, that's, that's the next big step. Why? Well, because, in, and this is really typical in all math science, you need the equation. And do you remember what they mean when they, um, we, we all, let me write a note down here. This is really important to realize at this point. Always need the equation. And, and, and by equation, what do we mean? X and Y only. We need to find a relationship that exists between X and Y only, not A or any other letter. So, so, find A. Because right now, I have a relationship between X, Y, and A. A is like the third wheel. We don't want A in there, right? We want the relationship that exists between X and Y. We don't want A in there. So, that's always what you got to do. You got to find A. So, how am I going to find A? Why can't we just make it point two five? Why in the world would it be point two five? One four. So that the cancel, just no, I think what you're getting confused on is if there was no A there at all. Oh, okay. Right? Then, then but we, we have an A there. We, we don't, it's some number and we don't know what it is. So we need to plug in a point. Wait, okay. Oh, yeah, 0, 020. Yeah, let's plug in the 0, 020. Because that, that's certainly 0, 020 is certainly a point on the graph. Watch what will happen. I put in 0. What's that side? Zero. And I put it 20. 20 minus 20? Zero equals zero. So that point's true. It's just not very helpful. It's zero equals zero. Really, we've already used the zero 20 in uh, centering. So that's why it doesn't give us any more information. It's already done its job. So is there another point we can use? This one, huh? What's the coordinates of that point? From the center, from the origin. No, sorry. Over 60, 60 yeah. up 0. Is that good? Over 60, up 0. Is that good? That's the dot, over 60, up 0. So let's put that one in. That's x and y. That's a point on the parabola, isn't it? So it's got to make the equation true. Plug in 60 for x. And zero for y. Work it out. We're going to solve for a here. What's that? 80a negative times negative. Negative 4 times negative 20 is positive 80a. How do we solve for a? Somebody have that? 3,600 over 80? Um, four. Four? No, that would be 32. No, no. Four point, yeah, 4.5. We good there? So we're not done yet. Now we're ready to answer the questions. So A is 45. So if you're okay, I'm going to go to a fresh screen. I'm going to write out now this equation here, this is our equation, except now we know A. So we have x squared is minus 4A times y minus 20. And A is? 45. 45. And that's um, minus 180. Okay, that is the golden ticket, like Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory thing. That's the golden ticket. That will get us into any question we want now. That's the actual equation. That's the relationship between x. That makes sense. You could plug in x and find y, or plug in y and find x, right? They could ask us for any point now, and we could plug in either x and find y or vice versa, y and get x. See how once you've got that, you've got the golden ticket. You can answer any question they want to ask you because you, you found A. You've only got x and y.
That's what you want. That's what it means to have the equation in any math science kind of thing. When you've got the x, y, no other letters, you got it. You can answer anything. Now, we're ready for their question. They said, uh, 10 feet to the right, how high up? Well, that's a point on the problem. Over 10, up y, or up height, if you want, whatever. Over 10, up h. You can use y, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Does that make sense? If I want to know the height over 10 feet, they're basically asking me, if, if x is 10, then y is that height. Find, find the height. I can just plug that into the equation now. Am I going too quick? Is this making sense? So, and then they're going to ask me over 30 feet and over 50 feet, same thing. Just plug in X is 10, find the Y or the H, whatever you want to call it. And there's going to be another point you can find next. I'm not going to bother with any other ones, but it would be over 30 up H, and there'll be another over 50 up H, right? You can find the heights at different points to the right. So at X equals 10 feet, find h. So plug in 10 comma h. So plug in 10 for x. Plug in h. Or you can just leave y as y if you want. You don't need to plug in h. Yeah, why don't we just call it y, whatever. It is the height, huh? Mm -hmm. Just leave it y. So there we go. So that's going to be what? 100 is minus 180. Y minus 20. How do we solve for Y there, the height? Add 180 to this. No, you have to divide. Yeah, I got to divide it. Divide by that. Minus 180, huh? And I think you get 0.5 forever, right? Minus yeah. 0.5555555. I didn't think it was right because it's. Last step to get Y alone? Add the 20, and you'll get Y is. 19.4. So in other words, the bridge is 19.4 feet high at 10 feet to the right. And you could also do it for the 30 and the 50 like they asked you. So we have some real power now with these parabolas. We can figure all kinds of things out about parabolas. How are we doing? We good? Questions? I'm a, that's it. I'm going to leave the problem section behind and go to ellipsis, if you're okay. Questions I can answer on that one? All is well? All right.